After completing my first 3D animated short film, I got a lot of questions from family and friends. They don't really know what I do. They know I use a lot of computers and all, but that's about it. I wanted to break it down for all the people outside the industry and tell you how to make an animated movie in a way that's easy to understand. It all starts with a story. You gotta have a great story, otherwise nothing you do matters. It doesn't matter how great your film looks and how much effort you put into it, people are not gonna like it if the story sucks. My idea for Food for Thought came when I was at the zoo. Watching this big monster crab in a tank with the nameplate on it, and I saw that there are other fish in the tank, but they didn't have a nameplate. And I was thinking, do they know that they're not a part of the exhibit? Do they know that they're just food? In the process of making the film, I changed the story about a hundred times. The story grows and evolves with the production. Once you establish the story, you have to write it. In your head it might sound great, but you have to have a feel if the story works. Now it's time for drawings. The storyboard is kind of like a comic strip, but it shows you the key camera angles and main positions of your characters in every scene. It doesn't need to be super detailed, it just needs to give you the feel of the scene, the pacing of it. After you're done storyboarding, you put all those drawings in an editing program and add sound and voices. It doesn't have to be the final sound or even the actual actor who's going to do the voices later, it just needs to be good enough to make the film read well. Out. They'll never let me leave. I'm the main attraction. What attraction? This is actually the first time you're watching your whole film in a comprehensive way that anyone can get. This is a good time to make any last minute story changes. If you feel that something is missing or not working, for me this stage took a long time because I had to make sure I got everything right. After the next couple of stages, it's going to be a lot harder to make big changes. Now we're getting a bit deeper into 3D. The first thing you do is build your models based on your character design. A 3D model is a polygonal object that can move or do anything. It's gray and it's boring. This is what you're going to put life into later. Now I'm not a modeler, so I was very lucky to have Ellen Sue design all my fish models for me. Now to make the model move, you need to build a skeleton. Just like an action figure couldn't move without the right joints and bones, so does a 3D model. You build that skeleton in the 3D program and you define what it can or cannot do and how much. You need to make sure the rig can do what you want them to. For example, I knew I wanted Joe, the bluefish, to be able to have his eyes grow and shrink in a cartoony way, so I made sure the rig can do that. So now I have my models and they can move just the way I want them to. The last thing before starting the animation process is creating a pre-visualization or a prefix. This is similar to the animatic we did before, but it's in the 3D environment with the final camera movements and models in it. It's also a good time to have your final voice recordings done so you'll have the correct timing for everything. This is the absolute last chance you have to make any kind of story changes to your film. After that we'll start animating and going back from that will cause serious delay in productions. I had to make sure the previous works and that I was completely happy with the story. Now all that's left is taking each shot from your pivots and animating the characters to the full extent. The animation process is like playing with 3D puppets and could be a lot of fun, but it's a very long and difficult thing to do. This is what's going to give life to your piece, so put all the time you need into it. After that, you have a fully animated previs which kind of looks like your final product, except it's really really ugly. After the animation is done, the lighting and rendering team takes each shot and make it look really good. They put lights in the right places, they place textures on your models, and make sure everything looks as good as possible. This process is very technical and would be hard to explain, but think of it as building a virtual studio around your live action shot, making sure the lighting complements the characters and all the shadows look good. The rendering process is extremely long and it would be heavy on most computers. That's why a lot of companies have what they call a render farm which is basically a room full of high-end computers that were meant just for rendering. After you get your renders back and you like them, you place them back in the editing program, the one we used to make the animatic and then the previous. 
Now our movie is almost done. We just need a little bit of polish. <laughs> but I don't understand. Why are we here? Color correcting is a term you might have heard before, and it refers to the process of making all your shot look as similar as possible. After you match all the colors, you do a final gray layer for the whole movie to make it feel the way you want it to. The last thing to take care of is an extremely important one, sound design. Every step or click or breath in your movie needs to sound good. The first sign of an amateur film is bad sound design. So that was a quick breakdown on how to make a short animated film. Hope you enjoyed it and you're welcome to check out my film Food for Thought or go to my website. Thanks for watching!